Seabus. Hi, Gary with Motrite. I just wanted to show you a little project that we're working on today. Uh, actually, it'll probably be a two-day job. Um, but I have a customer. We've been here. We're starting a uh, landscape renovation for them. This is going to be probably a three-phase project. Uh, the first one being just clean up, mulch the house. Um, and we are. what I wanted to show you is we're going to rework this uh, natural drainage area that they have in the front yard. Uh, so over this way, I've started to measure and I've, I've started to um, take a couple... Uh, preliminary measurements kind of show you what we've got going on here. So over here you can see uh, where the water drains um, and you know it's pretty dry right now it's July uh, I'm supposed to get a little rain but generally um, when the water comes through here it comes through. Um, spring and fall they usually have a slow trickle uh, almost all the time uh, and you can see the water sort of erodes uh, the landscaping over here. Uh, so it kind of makes its own path and it comes this way and and then it sort of puddles up here in the low spots um, you know and it makes its own erosion uh, back in these areas through here uh, so what we're going to do as you can see I've painted some lines on this uh, and it meanders all the way down through here and it kind of comes into the woods and a lot of times it uh, you know it makes for hard foot traffic and things like that in this area and you know this whole bottom section through here stays wet almost all spring and fall uh, so what we're going to do is reroute this a little bit uh, we're going to add some stone to the bottom of it and give the water a proper channel uh, to come through we want it to be a lot more symmetrical first thing i did there was mark my center line uh, then from the center line i measured out each way that way we can make them more symmetrical instead of going wide like this out and around I kind of narrowed it so it'll flow um, quicker and smoother through there and hopefully that'll alleviate all the wetness they get over on this side and that natural channel. As I dig this dirt out I'll put it over here to raise the elevation. That way you know uh, it helps funnel the water in that area. Um, same thing but not as bad on this side of the driveway uh, and it just kind of comes through here. Starts up this direction. Uh, so basically we're going to have a continual sort of swale um, through this way and the pipe will carry it under the driveway and then it's going to come through like this. Uh, in the future we're going to take out and you see some of this area has already been cultivated but that's going to become grass, um, a grass that will meander from the top all the way down. Uh, for this year we're going to end up just cleaning up a lot of this stuff, pruning, cleaning, and mulching. Um, but probably phase two would be next year. And we're going to take out most of their front landscaping here. Uh, all the overgrown plants and ivy. And we're going to uh, replant some things that I've suggested for the customer. So, um, you know, today the big project is going to be digging this out. And uh, tomorrow we're going to be putting some of the stone in. And we'll show you how we do that step by step. So keep watching. Well, just about got it all dug out. However, we just got hit with some rain. Uh, you can see now that uh, the new creek bed I've dug out is definitely flowing some water. Um, you know, when we got here, it was almost dry. Luckily, I got most of it dug out. I had about uh, three more feet to finish there before it came through. And now it's uh, basically uh, uh, running water. Luckily we got a lot of this accomplished, so um, we'll have to come back and um, wait for this to dry out, come back in a couple days, try to finish it out, try to regrade the outsides and whatnot. So uh, we're back here at the creek bed project and it's been a couple days as you saw on the last clip there. Uh, it started raining uh, really hard when we were digging it out. We got about 90% of the way there. Uh, I've been waiting for it to dry out some. It's still kind of soggy but I think we can get some work done so we're back here. As you can see behind me here 
Um, I have the uh, cobbles that we're going to put in the creek bed. Uh, they're pretty good size, somewhere anywhere from about an inch to five inches in diameter. You need something kind of big so it doesn't wash down. Um, I had recommended to the customer that um, that we would um, maybe put some larger boulders uh, through the creek bed. Uh, at this time, I guess the budget wasn't there, so we're going to skip the bigger boulders and cross our fingers, hope that the creek... Uh, the creek run doesn't wash down. Um, so let's take a look at what we're doing right now and uh, we'll go from there. So you can see we've got some of the landscape cleaned up like we talked about. We've uh, managed to get that done over the days that the creek was wet. Um, so, you know, our creek has been washed out quite a bit. Uh, you can see the areas that I dug out and, you know, I set some of the bigger boulders off to the side dug it out still kind of muddy and standing water especially down towards the end where we didn't quite finish um, over here we're getting started on the high side uh, and I've got some commercial landscape fabric um, this is a big roll that you can get at a landscape supply store uh, and I've laid it here through the creek bed now what I've done is you know if you're gonna put this in your landscape beds it has to be pretty smooth over here we just want to watch for some of these folds uh, but I've put it down through the creek area that we're going to landscape uh, or we're going to put the uh, creek run the cobbles on top of anywhere that there's a curve or a corner you know this stuff is in a six foot wide roll uh, this creek is it's going to be four foot wide most of it uh, so as you make a turn it wants to bind up so what you'll see is I just cut a slit and I overlap this um, as I go. Now notice I've overlapped it in the direction that the water flows across it. I don't want to do it the other way. You know, in case the gravel shifts or whatever, um, the cobble shift, I don't want that to peel up. Uh, on the same note there, as I've done this, you can kind of see on the ends, I've folded it under. Um, and you want to do that so that you're your ends, you know, your extra, because this is a six foot wide roll. So I folded about a foot of this underneath. Uh, I wanted to make sure I had enough so I didn't get a four foot roll. I got the six foot one. Uh, just because there's a couple wide spots, I wanted to also make sure that, you know, in areas where the bank's higher and goes up like this, I have enough room to just set it in the bottom. Uh, I do, however, want to keep this so that it's, you know, a few inches away from where the actual edge is. That way, you know, as the stuff washes and grows in, you don't get this stuff to creep up and you get this scraggly looking landscape fabric. You see that sometimes when, when people put it too close to the edge. So, I've lined this creek, uh, this top portion of the creek with it. Anywhere that there's a turn, I just cut a slit. Um, say in the, in the concave section, I'll just cut a slit and then I'll overlap it that way. Um, to hold it in place, You'll use something like this. These are landscape uh, fabric staples. Uh, and here up in the corners, I'll probably leave them in. <clears throat> Ground's pretty soft in the creek, so I can just push them in. Um, you'll probably just leave them in, you know, where you don't want this stuff to peel away. Uh, so I'll put them down the edges to hold the fabric while I'm putting the cobbles in place. You can see as I got up here towards the end, uh, I put a few of them in just to hold it while I was working. Um, and then as I got down here, I just threw some rocks on top. That way it holds it down. Uh, now, you may go down the edge and put them, you know, every foot or two. That way, you know, if your cobble doesn't come all the way up to the edge, it'll hold that. Uh, but other than that, just put these where you need it to hold it in this situation. If you're doing a regular landscape bed, then uh, you would put these guys in every couple feet just to hold your fabric down. That way it doesn't peel up over time. I know if you do much landscape work, you've been to projects where they've tried to use this as a weed mat fabric, and over time it just pops up and it comes through the mulch, and that's because of the poor installation. Uh, this is a commercial grade fabric. Uh, it's really um, pretty thick stuff. It's not plastic. Uh, it's more of an actual fabric. Uh, and it's tough. You can cut it easily with a knife uh, or scissors. Um, you know, I just use a utility knife. Uh, so you can cut it pretty easily with utility knife um, or scissors. 
Um, I would not recommend plastic. It breaks down the UV sun. You know, rays hit it and it comes apart into pieces. It's not environmentally friendly. Um, this will last a long time. Matter of fact, it's guaranteed, I think, 15 years. So, so we're working this in sections. As soon as we get some cobble in here, I'll kind of show you. You can see we we've put the river stones down through. Uh, that's a better look at the bank that we dug out. Um, and made it nice. Now, one thing I wanted to show you through here is, as you saw in the video where it caught us with rain for the day, um, it was washing through here pretty hard, all the way up through here. I mean, it was running pretty hard. So you can see we've dug the bank pretty tall. Uh, we've got, I don't know, on this side over here, probably about a foot, and over on this side, probably about four inches of height between the creek bed. Plus, all this stone will settle in some. You can see that the stone we've used here are cobbles. Um, and there are different sizes, uh, everything down from about uh, four to five inches in size down to about an inch in size. And right now you can kind of tell they're really dirty. Um, so uh, they're super dirty. Uh, so what you don't see right now is right now they look kind of a monotone gray color, but really that's just the dirt on them. What you'll find is that after they've been rained on and the creek runs through a couple times, it'll wash these and as it washes them you'll see a lot of color come out and then you'll see you know uh, browns and reds and oranges and some granite pieces uh, you'll see a lot of uh, a variation because of the natural creek stone that, that this is dug from um, this is expensive product believe it or not uh, it's probably the, the most expensive product you'll get at the gravel pit um, on the other hand what I've done through here is I've put a layer, and this is an area we haven't finished yet. You can see where the cobble stops and the twos start. So what I've done over here is I've put just crushed twos. Um, the reason I did this uh, is because um, I wanted to give a base layer of twos. Uh, two or three inches of the twos because they're an angular, um, crushed kind of product. And you can see the flow that this, this has when it rains hard. So this crush product, um, I hope, is going to be that it holds uh, the rounds in place some. You know, as the creek comes through, uh, this crushed isn't going to wash down. So I put a layer of crushed tubes down on the bottom. You know, like I mentioned before, the customer was going to have large boulders throughout. I still recommended that maybe as an afterthought if they want to come back. But, you know, you could put some boulders here, some around the edges, especially where the water comes through the channel. Uh, and that'll help break the water flow so it doesn't um, wash quite as much. Also, it'll look really cool if we do that. Uh, we've got a couple larger stones that we've uh, pulled out before we started the project. But, you know, I'd like to have a lot more maybe this size, which is probably a couple hundred pounds. Um, you know, we've got some smaller, like 10 pounders or something, 10 or 20 pounders. But that isn't really what I want. I'd like some boulders like this that we could scatter through. So as we're done, since this is all we have, we're just going to put these towards the inlet right here to break some of the water. And we're going to go from there. Okay, so I'm going to fill you in one more time on our progress here. We've just about got it knocked out. I've uh, got the rest of my crew over here. Um, and we're just going to put some straw down to finish it. But um, we've got all the gravel in. And let me show you what it looks like now. And we're going to take a look. Let's take a look at the finished product. As you can see, we've got all the cobbles in place. We graded it out nice. Put the large boulders back in. Now you can see we put some straw on the hillside. Um, We'd like to come back, I was just talking to the customer about putting some netting on this because obviously if we get some hard rain uh, for the next few weeks there's a potential that it could wash, which kind of worries me a little bit. Uh, the bank's all packed in pretty well um, and there's a lot of twos mixed in with the bank. Uh, however, um, put the straw in obviously to hold all the loose topsoil in place. Hopefully, after watching this project, it's been helpful for you, and uh, it'll give you some ideas on your drainage situations.
If you need any projects done, some creative landscaping, you can always call us at Maltrite. We can take care of it for you. Or you can keep watching our videos and come up with some ideas of your own. Thanks a lot for watching.